In this video, I will explain how to solve an integer programming problem using the branch and bound method. So let's jump right into an example. Let's say we want to maximize the function z equals 5x1 plus 4x2, subject to the following constraints. x1 plus x2 has to be less than or equal to 5, and 10x1 plus 6x2 has to be less than or equal to 45. Now, check out this last constraint. x1 and x2 both have to be greater than or equal to 0, and x1 and x2 have to be integers. So this is what makes this problem different than a regular linear programming problem. We're saying that whatever values of x1 and x2 maximize this function, they have to be integers, so they can't be decimals. So the way that we go about solving this problem using the branch and bound method is we temporarily relax this constraint. So we'll say, let's just ignore this constraint right here that they need to be integers. Let's say we want to just solve this linear programming problem and we're just going to ignore this integer constraint. One way to do so is by using a graphical method. So here's what that looks like. So when we use a graphical approach to solve this problem, we just graph these two constraints and we're able to come up with something called a feasible region. So that's this red region right here. Any point in this region would satisfy all of the constraints that we have, but it turns out that the point within this feasible region that maximizes this function is the point 3.75 comma 1.25. So this is the point in the feasible region that maximizes this function. So let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, so if we relax this constraint that x1 and x2 did not need to be integers, this is the optimal solution to this problem. x1 is 3.75, x2 is 1.25, and when x1 and x2 take on those values, z turns out to be 23.75. Now, we know that this cannot be our final solution because x1 and x2 are not integers. So we need them to both be integers. So this is where the branch and bound method comes in. So here's how this method works. Identify the variable with the largest value. So x1 has a larger value of 3.75. What we're going to do is create branches off of this initial solution where we say, let's round this first variable x1, let's round it down to the nearest integer. So that would be three. So what we're going to say is, x1 needs to be less than or equal to 3, and then we're going to round it up to the next integer, so that would be a 4. So we'll say x1 could be greater than or equal to 4, because notice that 3 and 4 are both integers. So what we're going to do is, under this new branch right here, we're going to solve the same maximization problem, but we're going to add the constraint that x1 needs to be less than or equal to 3. Now, graphically, that would look something like this, where x1 has to be less than or equal to 3, so our new feasible region becomes something like this region. So all we're saying is let's find the maximum value for x1 and x2 with this new added constraint. So you could solve this new maximization problem using a graphical method again, or you could use an analytical approach and use software, but however you choose to decide to solve it, this is what the optimal solution turns out to be. x1 turns out to be 3, x2 is 2, and when they take on these values, z is 23. So it just so happens that when we maximize this value with this new added constraint, we'll notice that the values for both x1 and x2 are both integers. So because they're both integers, it means we don't need to branch off of this solution anymore. We can be done. And this value of z that we found, 23, this is our new lower bound. So what that means is that we're not going to accept any other solution where x1 and x2 are integers, but produce a value less than z is 23. So this is our lower bound. We're not going to accept anything less than this. So now we need to go ahead and perform the exact same operation using this branch over here. So what that says is find the optimal solution to this maximization problem again, but now with the added constraint that x1 needs to be greater than or equal to 4. So visually, if we look at that, that means draw a line at x1 is 4, something like this, and x1 has to be greater than 4. So this tiny little feasible region right here is where our potential solution will lie once we've added this new constraint. Now, here's what the optimal solution turns out to be once we've added this new constraint. So once we add this new constraint, it turns out that the optimal solution is x1 is equal to 4, x2 is 0.83, and when x1 and x2 take on these values, z is equal to 23.33. So because x2 is not an integer, we know that this could not be a potential solution to our problem. But what we'll notice is that the z value right here, 23.33, it's greater than our current lower bound. So it means we need to keep branching off of this initial solution. So we found that the optimal solution for x1 in this case was 4, and x2 is 0.83. So because x2 is not an integer, we're going to create new branches using x2 now. 
So remember what we do. We take the 0.83 and we first round down to the next integer. So that would be a zero. So we'll say the first branch is x2 could be less than or equal to zero. And our other branch is going to be x2 will be greater than or equal to. We're going to round up to the next integer, which would be a one. So we'll put a one right here. So if we consider this branch right here, what we're doing is we're solving this maximization problem, but we're adding the constraint that x2 needs to be less than or equal to zero. Now for this one, we'll notice that one of our existing constraints is that x2 has to be greater than or equal to zero. This new constraint says, well, now x2 has to be less than or equal to zero. So to satisfy both of those constraints, x2 would have to be equal to zero. That's the only possible value it could take on. And it turns out that when x2 is equal to zero, the value that maximizes this function right here, is this point right here. So x1 has to be 4.5. And again, x2 is 0. So when x1 is equal to 4.5 and when x2 is equal to 0, z turns out to be 22.5. So because this 22.5, this is less than our current lower bound, that means we also don't need to branch any further from this solution. So one thing that you'll notice about the branch and bound method is that when you branch off an initial solution, we are not going to find a value that is greater than this current z value of 22.5. And since our lower bound is already greater than that value, that's why we don't need to keep branching. Now, if we consider this branch right here, this says add this constraint to the constraint list. So here we have x1 is greater than or equal to 4, and then we have to add another constraint that x2 is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll notice that when we have both of these constraints that we've added, we'll notice that it's not possible for x1 to be greater than or equal to 4 and x2 to be greater than or equal to 1 and satisfy this existing constraint. Because if x1 was 4, this would be 10 times 4, which is 40. And if x2 was 1, this would be 6 times 1, which is 6. So 40 plus 6, that's not less than or equal to 45. So for this particular branch down here, it turns out that there is no feasible solution. So because that's the case, we also don't have to continue branching off of that solution. So what this means is that our optimal solution that satisfies all of these constraints, where x1 and x2 are both integers, turns out to be this solution right here. So x1 will be equal to 3, x2 will be equal to 2, and z is equal to 23. So that is how you can solve an integer programming problem using the branch and bound method.